AMD just revealed all their Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 series processors, and all I can say is, rest in peace Intel. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So this morning AMD had their Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 series launch event and during the event they showed off the specs, the benchmarks, the prices, and the release date for the 5950X, the 5900X, the 5800X, and the 5600X. And if you weren't there for my live stream, it is still available for Patreon members as an exclusive link, but otherwise I do keep those unlisted. But in any case, let's go ahead and dive right into those specs. So first of all, let's take a look at the Zen 3 based microarchitecture as a whole. And here we can see that, you know, for months and months I've been saying this was going to happen, but it did end up happening. We got an 8-core CCX this time around instead of two quad-core CCXs, which will actually increase their gaming performance quite a bit, as you won't have to be jumping across the Infinity Fabric to access that extra cache. No, instead, you just have direct access to the full, I believe, 32 megabytes of cache that is available in an 8-core CCX instead of being limited to the 16 megabytes in the 4-core CCX or having to jump across that Infinity Fabric, which, of course, does increase the latency and will decrease your gaming performance, which then was lacking a little bit when compared to Intel. Now looking at the IPC here, I was actually a little bit surprised because they are able to get up to a 19% IPC jump when you compare Zen 3 to Zen 2, which is actually a little bit higher than I was expecting. I was expecting somewhere around 15%, maybe slightly higher, maybe a little bit lower. And then on top of that, I was expecting, you know, maybe a slightly higher clock speed. But you know, they did actually achieve pretty high clock speeds, which we'll talk about in a minute. And a 19% IPC jump overall is absolutely huge. But with those microarchitecture details, out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual CPUs. So starting off with their flagship 5950X CPU, this has 16 cores and 32 threads. It has a base clock of, I think it's gonna be around 3.7 gigahertz, but they didn't specify, and a boost clock of 4.9 gigahertz, so it's the highest boosting product on their whole stack. It has the full 72 megabytes of cache and a TDP of 105 watts. Now looking at the 5900X, this has 12 cores and 24 threads as expected, a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a 4. 8 gigahertz boost clock, 70 megabytes of cache, and a TDP of 105 watts as well. Now moving on to their 5800X, this has 8 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a 4.7 gigahertz boost clock, 36 megabytes of cache, and a TDP of 105 watts. And then finally, we have their 5600X, which is the 6 core 12 thread processor with a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz with 35 megabytes of cache and a TDP of just 65 watts. So overall, that's pretty much what I was expecting, but where things get really exciting is when we look at the benchmarks and they did provide some and to be honest with you yes AMD as a company is going to show their products in the best case scenario but overall I think that the benchmarks they decided to show between the 5900X and the 3900X were actually pretty accurate so let's go ahead and take a look at them. So taking a look at the 10 games they decided to show here at 1080p we can see that on average the 5900X is actually 26% faster than the 3900X. Yeah that's right you heard me correctly 26% and you know funny enough there were some leaks that came out previously that I covered one of them stating that the 5900X would be around 25% faster and another one stating that it would be like up to 29% faster. So it looks like those leaked benchmarks were actually very accurate. Now moving on, we can see here that in an absolute worst case scenario, we can see that in Battlefield 5, it was only 5% faster, so that's not too great. But and in a best case scenario here, we can see that in League of Legends, it's actually 50% faster. So clearly AMD has made some architectural changes that are pretty significant in this design. Now when we move on, we take a look at the 5900X versus the 10900K, which I know a lot of you are wondering, is AMD finally gonna beat Intel? Well, it looks like that's the case because first of all, when we take a look at the Cinebench R20 single-threaded result, we can see here that it's about 16% faster. And then when we look at the 10 different games they decided to show at 1080p once again, we can see that on average, it's actually 6.8% faster, so nearly 7% faster. And you know, although that isn't like a massive increase and we're probably expecting to see a little bit higher in games, I think this comes down to the fact that there's still probably going to be a little bit of extra DRAM latency on the AMD Ryzen platform versus the Intel platform, so that's probably why they're not beating them handily, even though they technically probably should be. But in any case, a 7% lead is still a lead, and this is the first time in a really, really long time 
that AMD has actually beat Intel. So, you know, Intel, you should be really worried because although they didn't beat you by much, they are beating you and they do have the ability to lower their prices significantly if they have to do so when you release the 11th gen processors later next year. Now, when we take a look at the worst case scenario here, Intel is still faster in Battlefield 5 by 3%, so not too much there. But in a best case scenario, AMD is actually 21% faster in League of Legends. So if this CPU is leveraged correctly, it is a much, much more powerful processor overall. And then if you want to throw in the 5950X results here, they didn't actually show any, but you know, it's clocked 2% higher, so expect somewhere between a 1 and 2% gain on top of that. So yeah. AMD has the fastest gaming processor on the market now, hands down. It's fastest at absolutely everything because from Intel, the best you can get is a 10 core processor that is, it's going to now be slightly slower in gaming. But from AMD, you can get a 16 core processor that could be up to possibly 22 to 23% better in gaming at, you know, the best case result. So you just have a processor that's way, way better. And on top of that, it's supposed to be drawing quite a bit less power, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, it could be that that's not really the case when you actually get them under full load. But in any case, the seven nanometer design that AMD is building them on at TSMC is far more advanced than Intel's aging 14 nanometer node at this point, And it shows. And then moving on to price here, here's where things get kind of scary because it looks like the prices did go up. And in some cases it's not too bad, but in others it's really bad. So taking a look at the 5950, X here, we can see that it gets a $50 price hike over the 3950X, making it 7% more expensive. And taking a look at the whole entire stack, you can see that each and every processor got a $50 increase, which of course means that moving down the stack, you'll see that the percentage increase in price gets much, much higher the further down the stack you go. So for example, taking a look at the 5900X, that's $550, whereas the 3900X was $500, making it 10% more expensive. The 5800X is 12.5% more expensive at $450. And finally, the biggest oof, the 5600X is 20% more expensive than the 3600X at $300. So we're looking at a case here where AMD is starting to get into Intel territory in terms of prices, and that is not good. Now, in the case of the 5900X and 5950X, I get it. They're the flagship models. Sure, if you want to charge a little bit more, and to be honest with you, a 10% and 7% hike um, in overall price versus their ones that they're replacing, it's not too bad. And, you know, it's great that you can you know, slot them into existing motherboards. That's really nice to see. But when you look down at like the 5800X and 5600X, that's really bad. And there's something that just really does not feel right about seeing a 5800X at $450. Now, I'd have to take a look at Intel's pricing scheme again, but I think that's pretty much around where they're selling the 10700K. And to be honest with you, now you're looking at a scenario where, okay, yes, the AMD processor is better, but it's only slightly better. So, you know, and okay, yeah, they also have PCIe 4 and potentially, hopefully it'll come with the cooler. So there's still reasons why AMD is a better deal, but this really is chipping away at the idea as to why AMD was preferred in the first place is because it was a much better value product. Now, hopefully they'll come out with a 5700X and 5600 later this year so we can get the prices down further. And on top of that, hopefully when Intel launches its 11th gen processors, which might just ever so slightly take the gaming lead back by like a few percentage points once again, maybe at that point, AMD will actually lower their prices even further. So then at that point, maybe we'll be looking at, you know, get a 5700X for like $330 again. And at that point, you know, you're looking at a case where yes, AMD has much, much better value again. But I think at launch, I really am not so sure that the 5600X and 5800X are really great buys. I get it for the enthusiast products like the 5900X and 5950X once again, but yeah, it just it feels bad, man, looking at those prices increasing by 50 bucks, especially on the lower end one. And then finally, we have the release date and all these processors will be available on November 5th worldwide. That's right. You heard me correctly. Every single one of them, including the 5950X, which I know a lot of people, including myself, were expecting to launch a little bit later. But it looks like, nope, you'll be able to buy all these processors on November 5th, which is great to hear. And, you know, saying that we'll see if you can actually purchase them or not, because it seems like recently there's been a lot of issues trying to get new products looking at you RTX 3080 but hopefully AMD's learned from Nvidia's kind of goofed up launch of the RTX 3080 and hopefully they have enough stock so that people actually are able to get the processors that they want and to be honest with you I think there's typically a little bit less demand when it comes to processors in gaming PCs than there is with graphics cards because it seems like people tend to you know change out their graphics cards more frequently but either way hopefully you will be able to get one on launch I know that me personally I'll be trying my absolute hardest to get one on launch date so that I can do 
Also, it's overclocking content once again. I'm going to drop it in my uh, Asus Tough X570 motherboard and do all kinds of stuff on there to give you guys an idea of how it works and just a kind of cheaper X570 motherboard. Though, Although saying that, the X570 Tough motherboard does have very good VRMs and the latest BIOSes are actually very good as well. But in any case, you know, overall, I got to say that um, the performance increase is actually really, really good, almost a little bit better than I was expecting. It's definitely surprising to see a 26% increase on average when comparing the 5900X to 3900X. I was actually expecting it to drop, you know, somewhere in around uh, 20%, maybe even slightly lower than that. But I think Intel still does have a chance to come back with their 11th gen series processors if everything does go right for them. Because although, you know, AMD did win by a noticeable margin, they didn't absolutely trounce them. So there is a little bit of an opportunity left there for Intel. It's not completely over for them. And on top of that, you know, I think AMD kind of messed up by increasing their prices on the lower ones at just as much as they increased the prices on the higher tier items. Because yes, I was expecting a slight increase. And I've been saying for a while that, you know, expect the 5900X, 5950X to go up in price by a little bit. But to see the same increase in price on the lower end models is a little bit disappointing. And I think that does hurt AMD's value quite a bit. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the Ryzen 5000 series processors? Are you going to get one or not? Let me know what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.